All right, welcome back. First video of 2026. This is going to go pretty quick, uh, but before I just jump right into it, I hope everyone had a great time. Uh, safe New Year's, safe holidays, time with family, friends. Uh, I took a, some time and, uh, well, I really had a good time, to be honest, uh, but I did take some time and got ATAC. Uh, or really a, a plug-in for ATAC working that uh, is kind of a companion plug-in, I guess you'd say, for the WarDragon Pro. I'm going to continue to expand on it. Pretty excited about it. But I am also excited what I'm about to show you now, uh, which is a FPV detection capability for the WarDragon Pro. Um, I've split it into a couple pieces, and uh, before I just jump right into showing how it runs just bear with me here I want to talk just talk a little bit about how this works um, there is a piece that uh, was um, developed and and it's not uh, public I guess you'd say right at the moment that piece works along with Sig Digger and well really Su CLI so it's meant as a, um, a DSP uh, assisted capability to determine uh, if the if a signal is seen is it is it pow or ntsc uh, video uh, basically and it does it pretty efficiently um, there is some a uh, little bit of uh, prep to to have kind of a, a calibration done and i've tried to do that with the war dragon pro and include a workflow that uh, is going to be able to determine if a signal is seen is in fact um, FPV video. Um, I, for, for the moment, until I think through this a little bit more, I've kind of split things out. Although the plug-in can do a scan and, and uh, do a lot, um, I have taken some open source uh, GNU Radio and GR Inspector and I've leveraged it for its ability to look for continuous uh, wideband you know energy um, signals and I wrap that in a script that can step through and I'll, I'll just show you as I'm talking uh, on this war dragon FPV detect repo that I've made public uh, you can see there's some Python in here and there's a script you can see where I'm talking about where there's some hard-coded frequencies in here that are generally generally aligned uh, with race bands and and other things that are involving FPV transmitters and I have that kind of set up that by default it will take control of the SDR in the War Dragon and to do that I have to stop the routine currently because there's just the one main SDR I have to stop the routine uh, where it's looking for DJI's drone ID and the host PC in the War Dragon takes control of the SDR and starts doing digital signal processing and using GNU radio and everything on the host. I'm probably going to speed this up a little bit and, and think about how I have this happening right now because I have the GR ins uh, inspector looking trying to find energy which I'm going to show you here in just a minute and then when it does I kind of stop that routine and say hey uh, plug in check this signal out determine what it is um, I'm kind of thinking through that because there's a little bit of a pause there and I want to make this as fast as I can so I may just go back to where the plugins doing all of the work or perhaps I do almost kind of like a, a, a queuing of uh, one thing says hey there is this maybe it takes a snapshot of the IQ and then behind the scene you know it continues on and behind the scenes it's using the plug-in to, to do some analysis and then quickly uh, determine uh, what that is and then ultimately this this Python wrapper um, brings in a few things although the plug-in I keep referring to can do Z can output ZMQ I have this this Python file wrapping everything so various bits of information uh, from the War Dragon itself like its uh, GPS location and some other things I have that being wrapped and creating uh, a message uh, down up under you'll see it here it builds an alert message very similar to what I do for DJI's drone ID uh, especially when I can't determine 
the GPS location. So my thought is this becomes more of like a, an alert, a general awareness, hey, that somewhere uh, within the reception, I guess you'd say, the t detection capability of this box, of this kit, this signal was seen. So you get, you ultimately end up getting a dot on the map close to the War Dragon itself uh, within ATAC or your MQTT or whatever it is that you choose to integrate this with. And then you know, hey, there was uh, a drone operating in here or there one, there is one operating here using uh, FPV video. So you can read through here and kind of see my thought process there. I'm just going to jump right into though, uh, this is a War Dragon Pro that I'm recording on. Normally it's headless and you know this is kind of all automated and I'm just showing you manual intervention here. I've got a monitor plugged in. Um, you should be able to find this War Dragon FPV directory here. Uh, I have a README. I talk about various ways that uh, this could be started as a service and would essentially disable the uh, drone ID detection piece and focus more on FPV and I have a branch of Dragon Sync I'm working on that takes in uh, information from this new ZMQ port here that's doing FPV and I process it and I create cursor on target messages and um, a whole lot of things. I'm, I'm, I have added an a, basically a web, it's a very simple web API to Dragon Sync, and that is uh, in some cases what the ATAC plugin leverages. So imagine in ATAC you're getting indications of where drones and pilots and home and, and even ADSB I've added and then along with that also hey these are some signals that are being seen in particular like you know the FPV signals. Alright if you hung with me this far here uh, because some of you may start to download uh, an image and get your War Dragon uh, Pro set up or you may try this script standalone which is not going to have the confirmation piece because the the plugin I've not made public yet uh, outside of the War Dragon kit itself um, so here's what's going to happen I don't have an FPV camera plugged in right now I'm going to run this script uh, the, I've made sure that the service controller is uh, executable because on this box and the way I have it set up right now it's going to attempt to stop the DJI drone ID so you'll see that it goes in and stops the scripts on the uh, the ant SDR and now what it's doing is it's going to do one full complete uh, step across all those frequencies and because I have it by default kind of getting an idea of you know what what does the environment look like initially with no FPV uh, I mean and there's other signals around here Wi-Fi and f other 5 gigahertz signals but we'll give this uh, this does this uh, when you first start it up uh, you'll see a little bit of noise there because I have that script uh, I'll probably work on that occasionally um, making sure that the DJI uh, routine is stopped now you're seeing it's proceeding and it's stepping across those uh, frequencies now mind you um, there is other uh, 5 gigahertz signals I have it by default kind of looking for continuous energy over 2 megahertz wide so you see there's nothing now I'm gonna let it go one full pass um, my FPV transmitter will be up in 5.9 ish uh, so there's nothing now I'm gonna step over and I will plug in a FPV transmitter and we will wait for it to come back around here and again I'm probably gonna tweak this so it's you know faster and um, probably more efficient but you'll see here in a second we'll start to get some indications that it's starting to see the signal so there we get you know one hit looking at four something wide um, passes it over to the plug-in says no nope, not really seeing anything there We're getting a little closer here's a six meg So there we got 100% NTSC, which this is NTSC. It'll probably see it again here, um, kind of roughly around in this this range. And 
and then it'll it'll continue on so uh, we'll let it come by one more time just so you can get uh, the point here but uh, you can see how we're using one component for the energy detect which again the plug-in can actually do do it all um, but still uh, working working with that right now and I figured you know what this this approach could help uh, others maybe build upon this energy detect for other needs and so see we've got um, coming back around here we're picking up a little bit of the signal here and uh, well in that case we got a little mix up here of um, both POW and NTSC there's still like some fine tuning to the uh, calibration that can be done and you can see there we've got 100% on the NTSC side so what I do is uh, I skip a few of the samples because generally the plug-in nails it within just like the first um, few that it gets there so you can see um, there again 100% uh, is like pretty much guaranteed all right so I think that's enough you get the point that's where I'm kind of going with this and my goal would be uh, that this just become maybe configurable uh, within Dragon Sync or the plug-in or whatever totally open to um, any other suggestions or uh, feedback let me know but you can see uh, what I've been working on and what is going to be included so I'll control C this should shut down and restarts up the uh, drone routine on the ant SDR and yeah it should be it should be good all right thanks